Don't be fooled. Taylor Swift isn't the person you thought she was. She may be the biggest musician in the world, but there's so many secrets she's kept from you for so long. Whether it's causing an actual earthquake that almost split a city in half, to traveling back in time to fix the NBA Finals, to dropping her entire music career to be a stockbroker on Wall Street, there's more to Taylor's story than you could have ever imagined. Starting off at the top is the time Taylor caused an actual earthquake. Taylor expected a sold-out show in Seattle, but no one could have expected her to shake the entire city. Scientists were very worried about Taylor's arrival because they knew the city was at risk of collapsing. But what happened at her show far exceeded their expectations. Taylor came on stage in the beginning for the show, and her fans immediately became uncontrollably loud. The combination of speakers, fans jumping, and music created a possible dangerous situation. But you won't believe the magnitude of the earthquake. A Seattle geologist gathered data during the show and discovered Taylor caused a 2.3 magnitude earthquake. Taylor was legitimately shaking it off on the entire city. Taylor didn't regret the show one bit because she loves Seattle so much, but fans were shocked when she revealed the biggest regret of her career. Taylor said out of all the mistakes she's ever made, there's only one thing she regrets, and it has to do with a past lover. In 2008, Taylor went on the Ellen DeGeneres show and revealed the name of a famous celebrity who broke her heart. But she didn't leave his name anonymous and blasted him on live TV. But who's the boy, you may ask? Taylor said the name when Ellen Ellen asked if any of her new songs were about a boyfriend. She said there was one song on her album about a boy, but he wasn't in her life anymore. Taylor revealed he broke up with her over the phone in 25 seconds, and she wanted to show him she was worth more than that. Taylor revealed the boy was in a popular band with his brothers, and his name was Joe Jonas. But Joe responded to why he only took 25 seconds to break up with Taylor. He said he called Taylor to discuss his feelings for her, and she didn't take it well, so she hung up on him. But 10 years later, Taylor told Ellen Joe didn't deserve to be blasted on live TV, and now they're good friends and laugh about it because Taylor was just being a rebellious teen. Sounds like it's all love between Joe and Taylor. But you know what's even more loving? The time Taylor gave away $50 million? Taylor is currently on her heiress tour, and she's so happy with the success of her shows that she gave out $50 million in bonuses to every one of her employees. Some of Taylor's management didn't think this was a great idea, but Taylor did it anyway and gave her truck drivers $100,000 bonuses. Taylor gave the truck drivers bonuses because they stayed up all night driving her equipment across the country. Her other employees understood this and knew they probably weren't going to get a bonus too. But Taylor wasn't going to leave them hanging. She took another $45 million out of the bank and divided it up to every other person working on her tour. Every security guard, backup dancer, and sound technician received hundreds of thousands of dollars from Taylor's personal checkbook. Taylor was the man just like she said in her song, I'd be the man. I'd be the man. But Taylor wasn't always the billionaire superstar she is today. Taylor may not be a rags to riches story, but her upbringing was incredibly unusual. While many people know Taylor started her career in Nashville, Tennessee. She actually grew up 800 miles away in Pennsylvania. I mean, no wonder Taylor ordered 50 cheesesteaks for her and her crew after her show in Philadelphia this year. Girl loves her cheesesteak extra cheesy, and it better have fried onions on it or Taylor is going to toss that sandwich in the streets like an ex-boyfriend. But Taylor didn't grow up in any ordinary Pennsylvania neighborhood. She grew up on an 11-acre Christmas tree farm in Redding, Pennsylvania. Taylor's father worked on the farm when he wasn't busy hustling in the finance world for Merrill Lynch, but Taylor said growing up on the farm made her obsessed with Christmas. She loves Christmas so much she starts decorating her mansions as early as September. But that's not even close to the weirdest thing about Taylor. She's so obsessed with aquariums that she put a giant one in a $15 million Tribeca apartment. But you won't believe what she filled it with. Taylor filled the aquarium with vintage baseballs, and next door to the baseballs was Carly Kloss's room. But when Taylor didn't attend Carly's wedding, everyone thought thought they weren't friends anymore. Taylor even released the song It's Time to Go with the lyrics, when the words of a sister come back in whispers that prove she was not, in fact, what seemed. She's not a twin from your dreams, she's a crook who was caught. Fans knew the song was about Carly, but Carly attended Taylor's show in Los Angeles in 2023, so they're back on. But Taylor wasn't always friends with famous and successful people. In fact, her early days in Nashville were anything but a success. She said everyone in the city wanted a record deal, and she had to find a 
way to stand out. When Taylor was 11 years old, she drove into Nashville and submitted a Dolly Parton cover to record label offices, but got rejected by every single one of them. But Taylor's big chance came in 2005 when a Nashville cafe had a showcase. Taylor signed up, and when she got on stage, she shocked everyone in the room. Taylor played a few songs, and a man named Scott Borchetta saw her from the audience and signed her. But the catch was Scott didn't have a label or any previous clients. He was starting his own label called Big Machine, and Taylor became the group's first signing. She released her debut album a year later, and it peaked at number five on the U.S. Billboard 200 list. But before Taylor made it big in music, her goal was to be on a different stage. Taylor said before she went the country route, she wanted to be on Broadway. Taylor drove from Pennsylvania to audition in New York every week, dreaming of being cast in productions like Annie or Wicked. She said she was always going into the city for vocal and acting lessons. But after a few years auditioning in New York and not getting any roles, Taylor decided to take her talents elsewhere. That's when she started songwriting and playing guitar more. But Taylor said her love of theater never went away, and she got to live her dreams after being cast in the film adaptation of Cats. But going feline wasn't the right move for Taylor, as the film lost $20 million in the box office and was poorly received by fans. Now we all know Taylor's a natural performer. But I bet you didn't know being a rock star wasn't her first choice career. Taylor gets to travel the world and perform in front of thousands of people every night. But back in the day, her dream job was something a little more realistic. Taylor walked into first grade, and her teacher asked her what she wanted to be when she grew up. While most kids said an astronaut or a rock star, Taylor picked a more realistic job. She told her teacher she wanted to be a financial advisor just like her dad. Ever since Taylor was a kid, she admired her dad's passion for stockbroking and his successful career in finance. Taylor had no idea what a stockbroker was, but she knew her dad was passionate about being one. Taylor will probably never change careers to work on Wall Street. Imagine seeing Taylor taking the subway briefcase in hand. Now that's someone's wildest dreams. But Taylor is a prime candidate to hire her own personal financial planner as she's about to rake in a billion dollars from her era tour. But Taylor's dad's career in finance still paid off since he invested $500,000 in Taylor's record label in 2006. But his return on investment was legendary. He made $15 million when the label sold his daughter's masters to Scooter Braun. Dinner at the Swift residence must have been awkward that night. Yeah, Taylor, can you pass the asparagus? Oh, and I made $15 million off someone stealing your music. But Taylor's dad insisted he had no idea about the deal because he refused to join an NDA-signed phone call call with the label group because he didn't want to withhold information from Taylor. I guess he wasn't money hungry after all. But one thing's for certain, Taylor isn't leaving any city hungry because she's ending world hunger. Taylor's era's tour is bringing in massive amounts of cash and Taylor is using her earnings to better local communities. When Taylor finished her concert in San Francisco, she immediately went to the local food bank. But Taylor donated so much money to the food bank, they said it was the biggest donation they had ever received from a single person. Volunteers predicted Taylor's donation would feed 500,000 people a month for an entire year. But Taylor's charity didn't end there. When Taylor performed in Seattle, she donated 100,000 pounds of fresh produce to an organization called Food Lifeline and followed it up by donating 75,000 nutritious meals to a food bank in Denver. Taylor makes sure everybody eats. But even though Taylor is ending world hunger, there's still a lot of countries that ignore her. Guess they didn't get any free food. Taylor's song, Shake It Off, was banned in Australia because the radio played it too much and it became so successful. They wanted other artists to make the top 100 list so they stopped playing Taylor's music on their stations. But an entire presidential administration banned Taylor's music too. A former Trump aide blasted Taylor's music over the White House speakers and what happened next put a veto on Taylor's music forever. Another employee bursted into the room the music was playing from and told the aide to shut it off. They said Taylor supported Joe Biden and her music wasn't allowed in the White House while Donald Trump was in office. But Taylor's music also got banned from China. Her song I Did Something Bad from her Reputation album was banned in China because it was inappropriate. Even Taylor's 1989 album was highly censored in China because of the Tiananmen Square protests that took place in 1989. But Taylor just named her album That because it was the year she was born. But if Taylor wants to make sure her music is never censored again, she might just have to run for president herself. And a lot of people think she could win. American political commentators said Taylor is better qualified to be president than a lot of people running, but it got even more insane. The Federal Reserve studied Taylor's positive effect on the U.S. economy during her era's tour, and what they found will blow your mind. The Philadelphia Federal Reserve said Taylor was responsible for a massive increase in U.S. tourism. They also said her fans paid top dollar for hotels, restaurants,
restaurants and other services that will add up to over $5 billion. But what happened when Taylor went to Colorado was even crazier. The Common Sense Institute estimated Taylor made an economic impact of $200 million in consumer spending, which added $140 million to Colorado's GDP. And if you don't know what that means, just know Taylor made Colorado a lot of money and they'd be lucky if she ever came back so they could cash out again. But if Taylor is going to be the first female president, she probably won't be able to invite hardcore fans to her house anymore. In 2014, Taylor invited fans over to her Tennessee mansion when everyone told her not to. Taylor wanted to host an exclusive listening party for her album 1989 before it came out. But Taylor's security told her it was a bad idea and a huge safety risk. I mean, a fan could literally steal her Grammys or download her text with Maddie Healy from her computer. But Taylor didn't listen to them and selected 20 fans from social media. Taylor monitored their accounts for months because she wanted to make sure they were normal people. But when the fans arrived at Taylor's front door, no one was ready for what happened next. An assistant opened the door and walked them to Taylor's living room. Everyone was sweating because they were so nervous to meet their idol. But where was Taylor? Was she actually going to show up? The fans waited so long they were about to get up and leave, but then and Taylor appeared out of thin air. Everyone started crying, and Taylor fed them treats to calm them down while they all listened to the album. She even fed them her favorite food. And that's the next fact I bet you didn't know about Taylor. Taylor eats pretty healthy, so she can feel fit to perform every night. Every morning, she has a fried egg over a buckwheat crepe with ham and Parmesan cheese. For lunch, she's munching on a salad, yogurt, or a sandwich. But on the weekends, Taylor treats herself to her favorite meal of all time. Taylor goes to In-N-Out or Shake Shack and orders a cheeseburger, fries, and chocolate milkshake. And if she's feeling wild, she'll have her favorite drink at night, a vodka diet Coke. But when she's back home in Tennessee, you know Taylor's indulging in her favorite comfort foods, sweet potato casserole, brisket pot roast, and molasses cookies. But if you're ever at this restaurant, you might run into Taylor Swift. Taylor said her favorite restaurant of all time is Cracker Barrel, and she chows down on their famous breakfast of pancakes, hash browns, and bacon. But on the tour bus, when Taylor has to whip up something quick, she relies on spaghetti with butter. Maybe she'll date an Italian next. But when Taylor's not slurping on angel hair, she's predicting the future. I mean, what can't she do? Taylor won Billboard's Woman of the Year in 2014, and her speech forecasted who would win the award in the future. She told the audience the future Woman of the Year is probably someone sitting in a piano lesson or girls' choir at that very moment. And Taylor was right, because at that exact moment, someone actually was sitting at their piano, taking lessons and singing in a choir. And that same person was presented with the 20 2019 Woman of the Year Award. But who was the woman? It was actually Billie Eilish, and she thanked Taylor for inspiring her every day. But this next event Taylor predicted was even crazier. In a 2008 Ryan Seacrest interview, Taylor predicted one of her biggest songs. During the interview, she said, when you make mistakes, you need to shake it off. Six years later, Taylor dropped the song Shake It Off, which was the number one song in the U.S. for four weeks straight and received a diamond certification. Maybe Taylor isn't just a singer, but a time traveler from the future. But none of those examples compare to the time Taylor controlled the NBA playoffs. Taylor's era's tour began at the same time as the NBA playoffs, and every city Taylor performed at was affected by it. Taylor played three shows in Atlanta, right after the Atlanta Hawks lost their series to the Boston Celtics. But Taylor's powers didn't stop there. She played three shows in Philadelphia during the Sixers series against the Celtics, and you guessed it. The Sixers lost, and the Celtics won the series. But it got even crazier. Taylor performed in Boston during their series against the Miami Heat, and the Heat won the series. Fans said every city Taylor played in had its NBA team eliminated from the playoffs. But her luck ran out because Taylor Taylor performed in Denver leading up to the NBA Finals between the Nuggets and the Heat. But the Nuggets won the Finals and broke Taylor's curse. But Taylor isn't superstitious and that's why her favorite number is the unluckiest number of all time, 13. But why does Taylor love 13 so much? The number 13 is considered very unlucky, but Taylor has a specific reason for why the number is special to her. Taylor was born on December 13th, and she turned 13 on Friday the 13th. But it gets even crazier. Taylor's first ever album took 13 weeks to earn gold status, and her first song that went number one on the charts had a 13-second intro. But it doesn't end there. Every time Taylor's won an award at an award show, she sat in the 13th row. But there's one moment that top the rest, and it made Taylor understand how special the number 13 was. Ever since she was a kid, Taylor's favorite award show was the Country Music Awards. When she had the privilege of performing at the show for the first time, she was incredibly nervous. But the producer walked up to her backstage and told
told her she was about to go live in 13 seconds. Taylor believed it was a sign from above that her performance would go well and she had nothing to worry about. Taylor dominated on stage and went on to win 10 country music awards. But Taylor would have never gotten on that stage if it wasn't for her guitar teacher that she sued years later. Ronnie Kremer told the press he taught Taylor everything she knows about guitar. But he took it a step further and created a website called I Taught Taylor Swift Com. But Taylor wasn't having it and told Ronnie to shut it down immediately. Taylor's team sent Ronnie an email that said the domain name would weaken the Taylor Swift trademark. But Ronnie refused to shut it down because he bought the site name legally from GoDaddy for $30 and said he was proud he taught Taylor guitar. Taylor's team had no choice but to sue Ronnie. Taylor also insisted Ronnie never taught her guitar. She said he showed her a few strings, but she was mainly self-taught after that. But Ronnie said Taylor took lessons from him for two years and even helped her set up a studio in Nashville. Ronnie said Taylor was lying because her publicity team didn't like the fact that a 36-year-old bald computer repairman taught a music icon everything she knows about music. But Taylor's music teacher isn't the only person she has bad blood with. One of Taylor's biggest enemies is actually someone she used to be best friends with. This friend was a part of Taylor's crew for years and is an established actress and singer herself. But once she disrespected Taylor, she got kicked to the curb just like John Mayer. The friend is Zendaya. And after she appeared in Taylor's Bad Blood music video, Taylor considered her a friend for life. Zendaya praised Taylor for being so smart and an amazing influence. But Zendaya made a big mistake. It happened when Taylor was beefing with Kanye West and Kim Kardashian over the famous music video in 2018. Taylor said Kanye released the video without her permission. But Kanye and Kim insisted Taylor said it was okay. Fans were pissed Zendaya didn't use her platform to support Taylor. But Zendaya made them even more mad when she liked tweets that supported Kim and Kanye and roasted Taylor. Zendaya liked a tweet that cropped her out of a photo with Taylor and had the caption she was too pure to be in Taylor's squad. But she wasn't done stirring the pot and liked a tweet that was even more insane. Zendaya liked a tweet that said, I'm glad Zendaya was never really down with that whole Taylor squad. Taylor and Zendaya haven't spoken since. There is one person, however, that dissed Taylor but still has her stamp of approval. Taylor loves her ex-boyfriend to this day and they have the same name. Taylor and her ex-boyfriend friend Taylor Lautner started dating in 2009 after starring in Valentine's Day. But a few months later, they broke up and Taylor confirmed it in her song Back to December. Taylor sang she wished she knew what she had with him because he gave her so much love, but she told him goodbye. But Lautner responded saying he regretted not stopping Kanye West from stealing the microphone from Taylor at the MTV Awards. But years later, Taylor invited her ex to do something no ex of hers had been asked to do before. She hired Taylor to star in her I Can See You music video and it premiered at her show in Kansas City. Lautner was at the show, and Taylor stopped the show to tell the audience Lautner was a positive force in her life when she made Speak Now. She also said Lautner and his wife were close friends of hers. But Lautner took the mic from Taylor, and fans would have never predicted what he said. He said he respected Taylor not only as a singer and songwriter, but also as a human. But Taylor's kept this insane secret ever since she was 14 years old. In a GQ interview, Taylor said songs aren't the only thing she's written, because when she was 14, she wrote a novel. The book was called a girl named a girl and its story was so mature no one could believe a 14 year old wrote it the novel revolves around a mother who gave birth to a daughter but desired a son instead but how can fans read it will taylor ever publish it taylor said the only copy is at her parents house looks like the book isn't coming out anytime soon but you know what is taylor's first movie taylor has huge aspirations to be a film director and she's already directed music videos for her songs anti-hero all too well and bejeweled to name a few but taylor wants to make movies that go on the big screen, and it turns out her dreams will come true very soon because Taylor wrote a script and is signed on to direct it for Searchlight Pictures. No one knows for sure what the film's plot is, but with a talented director like Taylor behind the camera, it's sure to make its mark. But Taylor said it was important she wrote her first movie because she wanted to be fully involved in the message she was sending. But messages Taylor isn't sending anymore are DMs to her crushes on social media. Taylor hates social media so much she deleted it off all her devices. Taylor has 330 36 million followers across all her social media platforms, and it's created a lot of problems for her. She said her priorities are messed up because she lives in a society where social media controls her life. But what she said next was even crazier. Taylor said social media allows people to express their art and connect with their fans. But there's a huge downside to it, and you won't believe what it is. She said social media feels like there's three trillion invisible hoops she has to jump through, but she's never going to jump through all of them all correctly. But Taylor's fans have noticed she She's inactive on social media and want her back. One fan wished Taylor posted more selfies.
selfies like she did when 1989 was coming out. But Taylor risks her safety whenever she posts selfies because people find out where she is in the photos and follow her around. But one thing Taylor hates even more is streaming platforms like Spotify. In 2014, Taylor took all her music off Spotify and refused to release her album 1989 on it. Taylor argued Spotify didn't pay artists enough royalties, but things got even crazier. Spotify paid artists 0.4 cents per stream, which was split between labels and rights organizations before it even reached the artists. But when Spotify heard Taylor hated them, they panicked and hoped she changed her mind because she was one of their biggest money makers. Taylor was the third most streamed artist on Spotify and they lost millions when she exited. But Apple Music announced they would be offering a three-month free trial to subscribers and not pay their artists, and this upset Taylor more. She said it's not about her because she can support herself. Taylor said she was speaking for the new artists that just released their first album and weren't going to get paid at all. But Spotify offered free trials too, and they personally called Taylor and told her they were sorry. They agreed to pay her more royalties for their free trials, and Taylor released 1989 on Spotify a few days later. But Taylor has a photo framed in her house that brings her back to one of the worst days of her life. Taylor framed a picture of Kanye interrupting her VMA speech in 2009 to remind her of an insane lesson. Kanye interrupted Taylor's speech and embarrassed her in front of millions. The ordeal started a chain reaction of bad blood with Kanye, but Taylor makes sure to remind herself of the moment that started it all because she said life is full of little interruptions. 